Hello, welcome back, Nick Linz's Comic Corner, Classics Ask Non-Classics. This is episode number 248 and double shot number 181. Okay, two books, one from DC, one from Marvel. First up, a more book. This is X-Men Age of Apocalypse Twilight. This is the final trade for the new, new series of trades for the Age of Apocalypse. This collects X-Men 34, 5354, X-Men Age Apocalypse 1 through 6, Exiles 6061, What If 7781, What If uh, X-Men Age Apocalypse, plus material from Age of Apocalypse one shot, um, Hulk Broken Wars number 2, X-Men Prime, X-Men Age of Species, Exiles Days of Then and Now, and Official Handbook of the Marvel Universe X-Men. It's a pocket size five. Now, the interesting thing about some of the issues I'm collecting here, these are collected in other books, like the uh, the two issues of X Man, uh, that was collected in the in the uh, fourth volume of the complete Age of Apocalypse epic. Um, the what if issues I don't think have been collected before. The Exile series that was collected in in, in one of the trades. I don't know what number in one it was, but it was basically collected in one of those trades. Age of Apocalypse, and of course the Age of Apocalypse one shot that was clicked the Age of Apocalypse, the X Men New Age of Apocalypse trade. Um, everything else was probably clicked in some other place else. Now, how this trade is set up is this: is that the trade first starts out, get this, it starts out with, with a story from the um, X Men, uh, the Age of Apocalypse one shot. That's where it starts off first. Um, <clears throat> And then it moves on to uh, uh, a story from Hulk, Broken Worlds, book two. And I think after that, let's see. Yeah, then it's the two issues of X-Men. And let's see. Now this thing is set up. Let's see here. Uh, then it's the first two issues of X-Men Age Apocalypse. Interspice with some issues of, yeah, the first two issues of X Mage Apocalypse, and then after the first two issues, they did something a little unusual. They put the two issues of Exiles, issues six and six, in between issues two and three. My guess is because those two issues are placed between those two issues of that mini series. Uh huh. Yep. And then we have other stuff with the Age of Apocalypse mini series, just go completely fine. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't get any interruption from issues three through six, and then you have the. Uh, Endangered Species story, uh, and, and and then what if, but before the what if stories, it, uh, let's see, where is a good place for that, uh, let's see, just saw it here, well, it does end, the like, once the, um, Age of Poc, the New Age of Pocahontas mini, the Age of Pocahontas mini series ends, it then goes on to the Endangered Species chapters, which is a couple of chapters, which is, Tales during um, the actual thing, and of course, it just by stuff goes on in the pages of Exiles. And then it said, The saga, and then before it gets to the what if issue, it says, The saga of Age of Apocalypse continues in these colossal collections. Uh, let's see. You have the, um, let's see. You have the Kenny X Force, which I think is probably the first three trades of that particular collection. You have the two volumes of the Age of Apocalypse. Um, ongoing series and uh, X Terminate, which I have reviewed. That's where it has it, and the rest of it just what if stories and just handbook and other stuff. But otherwise, though, this is a good one. This is a good trade. Um, you could probably have this as sort of like a good conclusion thing to everything related to Age of Apocalypse. But I do recommend getting those trades along with getting um these five volumes. Probably a lot more. In date that these are probably more, these are kind of like new printings of the complete Age of Apocalypse trades. They just took those three trades and kind of split them up a little bit. I mean, pretty much you have just just stuff that was collected in other books and just put it in here. But despite that, a lot of everything here is really good. Um, some stuff I've never seen before, but yeah, this is good. Uh, I give this book a nine out of ten. Um, it's a nice conclusion to the Age of Apocalypse trades. 
if you want to be if you want to be a full completionist, I definitely recommend this. The three volumes of X Major Apocalypse and uh, Age of po X Major Apocalypse Dawn, which all serves as, as a companion to this. This is more of a conclusion. They want just a companion. No, no, that's it. All right, next up is a recently released trade. This is Superman and Justice League America Volume One, collecting issues. Justice League Spectacular Number One and Justice League America, issue 6168. Now, some of you are thinking, though, uh, where's Justice League International Volume 7? Technically, there never was a Volume 7 because because of the New 52, they decided to stop releasing for some reason. And so, yeah, this is unexplained. Uh, DC never finished collecting the, the, the run of Keith Giffen and Jan DeMathis from Justice League. Uh, Justice League slash Justice League America, uh, International slash Justice League America, and Justice League Europe. They never finished it. They stopped at Volume 6, which stopped with Issue 35 for Justice League America, and Justice League Europe, Issue 11. This book is the start of... This is actually Book 1 of 2 of Dan Jurgen's very short run. This run only lasted, like, about a year and a half. 17 issues, plus the spectacular. Now, the spectacular... Uh, that is a one shot that basically helps set the stage. It's it, it's basically the start of a new era for Just League International. That's simply where it is. After the crossover event breakdowns, this particular thing comes in the aftermath. Now Dan Jorgens writes and draws every single issue that comes in this particular trade. Now the lineup that you see afterwards, well for this book, it's basically how should I put this? It's like um, it's, it's like this half over here is Justice League America, and this half is basically what goes like Justice League Europe. Um, for Justice League America, it is, uh, in this book, it's Guy Gardner, Superman, Lou Beetle, Booster Gold, Fire, Ice, um, oh yeah, I think that's it for the initial line when the thing starts, but they do add Broodwing and Maxima, who is a recurring character from the pages of Superman comics. Now, in the case of Justice League International, uh, also Justice League America, uh, I haven't got that far yet exactly what, if there's any changes, but this is their initial lineup. Uh, Hal Jordan, Greenland, uh, Hal Jordan, Power Girl, uh, Elongated Man, Wally West, who was at the Flash at this point, uh, the female Dr. Light, Aqualand, Aquaman, and Crimson Fox. Now, out of all these members... Uh, who was part of the year, the other team, um, Crimson Fox and Flash were part of that team, along with Elongated Man. This half here is, I mean, you can kind of say that the Just Like America series during Dan Jorgens' run, it definitely does feel like a continuation of that very run, except they don't have all the members. I mean, Batman shows up occasionally here, but he's not a member of the team. The team is led by Superman. He was asked to lead this team by Batman himself. And Guy Gardner quits about, ha about partway through, and then, um, you're probably thinking, though, if you're just reading this, and doesn't, you don't read Guy Gardner's ongoing series, you're probably thinking, though, um, like, let's see, where's a good point in this? I mean, by issue, I think it's like 64, he just abruptly quits. Yeah, yeah, with issue, yeah, it's actually 63. Three issues in, Guy Gardner quits. And then two issues later, I think, yeah, I think it's two issues later, um, yeah, they go off the space, fight some villain cops, uh, Stars Stalker, I think his name is. Yeah, he's a minor just like villain. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. And then three issues later, you have Guy Gardner in his brand new costume. You have to read his ongoing series to understand the reason why he wears that. But possibly, I would say my personal favorite cover out of all these, aside from just like spectacular cover, which is done by Dan Jorgens, is the first issue that he does. Which is um, this cover right here. Those of you who are longtime comic fans know this cover very well. What is this cover? This cover, which is issue 61, just like America, this cover is a homage to uh, the very first issue of Just Like America, which came out in 1960. Yeah, Dan Jurgen. This is this is actually this is actually one of a handful of times this has happened where that cover has been homaged. At this point, this is like the third time this cover has been homaged. Um, except 
the only difference is even though they're playing chess and you know, that that is a plot device they use in this issue. But here's something interesting though. Destro uh Despero is not the main villain of this issue. It's this guy called the Weapons Maker. But it, it if you look that if you look up that cover and compare it to this, it looks it's very similar. Except that on this side it's Despero, and on this side instead of Blue Beetle, uh, Blue is in the place of Wally West. Uh they did homage this. Uh, when when Marsh Manor guest star for one particular shoot, actually I think this is the second time this has happened, where this cover has been homage. But the cover has been homage a few times. It's one of those covers that's been frequently homage, but it's a it's a gorgeous strong cover. Also, this is before Superman gets killed off in the Don in the death of Superman crossover. But I should also mention that uh, Booster Gold, uh, because Dan Jurgens created this character, that's the only reason why he's here. Because he's because he because he's a person that creates Dan Jurgens. I mean, Dan Jurgens wrote and drew his entire series. Well, his first volume, anyways. Uh, uh, and the reason why Superman's here is because he's a regular writer in the Superman books. Uh, as for the rest of the characters, well, I think the reason why he kept uh, Guy Gardner, Fire Ice, and Blue Beetle on board because they were leftovers. That because they were part of the, they were part of the previous run, and he. Because people were fans of that previous run, my theory is that he didn't want to disrespect uh, that previous team, so he kept he kept the majority of the members who were part of the previous roster, the previous incarnation of what was in this series, as part of the lamp, which I think is a smart move for him to do. I mean, they face Starstock, uh, Maxima. You get some advancements, some you get some character development for Maxima in the series. You get a new character, the former Broodwing, which is great. Um, all in all, and the other name, uh, Rick Burchett. He's not the artist. Dan Jorgens is the artist. Um, Gerald Jones is the right is co-writer one of the issues. Um, this guy here, Ron Burchett, I believe. Yeah, he he's one of the inkers. Yeah, he's one of the inkers of this particular of all the issues in here. So this one is just really, really good. Um, here's some interior artwork. Yeah, there's the Star Stalker. Yeah, he's a minor Justice League villain. Yeah, look at this guy. This guy, he looks. This guy looks so stupid. He's, he's probably one of the most cheesiest Justice League villains I've ever seen. Now his last known appearance I can think of, uh, prior to the Universe reboot, was actually in Justice League America Volume Two, in issue 29. Here's the problem with the issue. DC skipped over it. If you look it up um, on the collection trades for Volume 2 for Just Like America, issues 29 and 35, 37 have never been put into a trade. I have no idea why. Despite the fact, Steve Echo, uh, th those are actually really good issues. So those are here. So, but DC, DC uh, for some reason, was skipping over issues. This one, this is just the first eight issues of the run. And the volume two just has like the last like nine issues, which is okay. But this is still good if you're a fan of Dan Jurgens. I do recommend this. Even uh, also, if you're also a fan of Superman, Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, or even Fire and Ice, any of the characters seen in this cover. If you're a fan of any of these characters, I do highly recommend this. But I should warn you, this book is wow. This is a surprise. This is actually a little more cheaper than. Uh, some of the other trades they sell. This is only eighteen dollars. Yeah, that's how much the regular price for this trade is eighteen dollars. Highly recommend it. My rating for this book is nine point five by ten. This book is just awesome. <sighs> All right, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which will be episode two forty nine and episode one eighty two. Uh, double one eighty two. Till then, see you there. Bye.